Hi colleagues, I wanted to bring to you some information that's going to help you pass NAPLEX. And in the next few series, we'll be working on calculations. Today, we're going to be starting with uh, calculations for diabetes. So we're not going to be doing any type of calculations in this. We're just going to go over important concepts. And then once we're done with that, then we're going to jump into calculations. So stay tuned for more. So first we need to understand what are the categories of insulins. So for me, how I break down is to be organized on about how to help me understand and master the material. So for instance, in this case, we need to understand that we have the bolus types of insulins and we have the basals. Under the bolus types of calculations, we have the rapid acting and the short acting, which is also known as regular. And then the basals are the long acting and the intermediates. We also have the mixes, in which is the percentage basal and the percentage bolus that's given all in one. And then we need to know the types of insulin products we have. So we have the vials, we have the quick pens, and in this case, we need to know the concentrations and what the exceptions are. So for instance, in this case, when you're looking at the categories, as I mentioned in the prior slide, you're going to be looking at what we have under rapid acting, know the brand and generic. So we have the aspart, which is also the noble log, and we also have the noble log flex pen. There's the Lispro, which is the Umalog, and the Umalog quick pen. The, uh, the short acting, which is the regular insulins. We have the regular insulin, which is the Umalin R, Novalin R, Relion, Novalin R, Relion. So for this category of the regular, most, most of them are over the counter and they don't need a prescription to be to have that field or to purchase that from the pharmacy. But for the concentrated regular, which is the Umelin RU500, which is the highly concentrated, you do, need, um, you do need a prescription for that. So the intermediates will, will be having the protamin, the N. So we have the Umelin N and the Novelin N. And then we also have the NPH and regular combinations, which is part of the mixes, the Umelin 7030 and Ovalin 7030. And then the long acting, which is the basals as well, it's the Dedamir. Uh, under the Dedamir, we have the Levamir, Levamir Flex Touch, Glargine, that has the three types the Lantus, Lantus Solister, and Tujeo Solister, including Basagla. And we also have the Degladec, which is the Traceba. In this case, you need to know the brand generic and know which one is rapid acting, which one is short acting, the intermediate basal and the long acting basal. Moving on, we need to know how to initiate insulin regimens. And when in initiating insulin regimens, we have two types of diabetes, the type one diabetes and the type two diabetes patients. So you need to know and read the question and find out which type of patient you're working with. The reason being is the initi initiating insulin doses for type one diabetes is a higher dose, um, dose unit compared to the type two diabetes, which has to start gradually and then titrate up compared to how the patient is or depending on their goal. A1C goal. And then we need to know that when calculating the, when initiating insulin regimen, we need to know, we need to have the body weight because some of the units are in units per kilogram per day. So we need to use the body weight to, uh, to find the right dosage. And in this case, we use the total body weight, TBW. And then for the units, we need to know what units of insulin is used to calculate the total daily dose. So what I'm here, what I mean here is that the units are usually the concentration of unit of, of insulin. And we'll be looking at more examples as we move forward in, in another video. So 
um, know the concepts of dividing the total daily dose for, for example, in type one diabetes, they have the long acting plus the rapid acting insulin. And then sometimes they also have the insulin NPH or the regular plus the regular insulin. And also uh, type one diabetes as well, um, long acting rapid acting insulin and insulin and pH plus regular. That was a repetition, so I'm sorry. So the main concept is knowing that for type one diabetes patients, we can either give them long acting plus a rapid acting or insulin and pH plus a regular insulin. So in this case, we're going to start by knowing the concepts for initiating um, type one diabetes insulin regimen. So for, for example, when initiating the long acting insulin plus rapid acting insulin, uh, we need to use the total body weight to calculate the total daily dose. The units that we are usually, we, we need to memorize for the exams is 0 0.6 units per kilogram per day. However, when you read the question, they may, off, they may give you the units that the patient is using. So you need to know this as the base, the 0 0.6 units per kilogram per day and then read the question to find out if you have any units provided. And then once you multiply by the total body weight, then you'll be having the units per day. So then for long acting plus rapid acting insulin, you will be going ahead and um, dividing the total daily dose into two, which is 50% basal and then 50% rapid acting, and which is the bolus. And then further down step three, you need to divide the bolus um, into three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then in the case of insulin NPH plus the insulin regular, um, you are going to also find the total body weight and then calculate with the total daily dose to find the total dose the patient is taking. In this case, it's going to be different because then you'll be using the two thirds NPH, which is the long acting, and oh, sorry, the basal, and then one third regular, which is the bolus. Generally, NPH and regular are given to get together th twice a day, 30 minutes before breakfast and dinner. That's an important point to know. So BID, twice a day, uh, 30 minutes before breakfast and dinner. And then further into uh, getting uh, type one diabetes to be at goal, we need to calculate their uh, insulin to carb ratio. So this determines the unit of insulin required to cover the grams of carbs in, in a meal. And then we also have to calculate the correction factor, which is to determine the amount of insulin needed to return the blood glucose to normal. So this is added to mealtime bolus and determined by the individual correction factor. So you may be asked to calculate the correction factor. Um, this question sometimes are very tricky, so you need to know how to approach them because they may be two, three, or four steps, but they're very easy. So an example of insulin to carb ratio is we need to know the, the rules we have. We have the rule of 500. We also have the rule of 450. The rule of 500, 100 is for rapid acting. And then the rule of 450 is the regular insulin. Here's an example of what's considered rapid acting and rapid um, and short acting. They're both bolus. And then the, for the correction factor, there's the rule of 1800. And then there's the rule of 1500. Um, in this case, you need to actually know when you've calculated the correction factor, what does it mean? In this case, I mean that you need to know that the correction factor is for the one unit of rapid acting insulin. And also maybe for, for example, the regular insulin, it's the correction factor for one unit of regular insulin. So you may be given to calculate the question and then further down, you asked what it means, the value that you get, what it means. So it means that that's the one unit of regular insulin that's needed in order to, in order to uh, return the blood glucose back to normal. In this case too, for the insulin to carb ratio, you also need to know that it's the, the value you find is the grams of carbs covered by one unit of rapid acting insulin, or it's the grams of carbs covered by one unit of regular insulin. 
So for type two diabetes, we are going to learn about uh, initiating and adjusting their insulin regimen. Here we have the basal insulin may be initiated for type two diabetes that are not controlled by the PO medication. So in this case, you need to understand what the, if the patient has already utilized some PO medication and it's not working and insulin needs to be added. So in that case, then um, that's a good point to know. And then here we need to know what, you know, the insulin conversions. In most cases, there are some assumptions that we have to make. In most cases, it's going to be one-to-one -one conversion. Um, and then there are exceptions. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So first of all, before we dive into that, let's look at initiating and adjusting an insulin regimen for type two diabetes. So step one is you initiate 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 units per kilogram per day using the total body weight, or you can, you can just go ahead and use the 10 units per day, whichever you memorize is okay. But it's good to know all, you know, all these concepts. And then titrate 10 to 15% or two to four units once or twice weekly to reach the um, fasting blood glucose. And then if the A1C still remains uncontrolled or above the fasting blood glucose level, then add one to three doses of mealtime insulin. So that's how you initiate, adjust insulin regimens for type two diabetes patients. However, when it comes to insulin conversions, this is where we're talking about, in most cases, it's one-to-one -one conversions, but the exceptions are when converting twice a day NPH to once daily insulin glargin. Insulin glargin is the long axing. Use 80% of the total daily dose of NPH dose as an initiating, as initial glargin dose. And then you tighten it up if the patient is not a go. When, con when converting from once daily to J or to once daily Lantus or Basagla, use 80% of the total daily dose of Tujeo to initiate Lantus of Basagla dose. So here's an example. So um, this point number two is referring to uh, this portion of, um, of this concept here. So glargin has different brand and generic. So the brand name is glargin and then the generic is Lantus, Tujeo and Basagla. So sometimes you could be switching within the same brand name, but then different generics. And then we, we also still have to lower that by 80% in order for us not to uh, put the patient um, or throw the patient into um, um, low blood glucose. Um, with this, these are the main concepts and, you know, subscribe and hit that bell button and give me a like if you like these types of videos and stay tuned for more videos to come. Thank you.